uh, you know, I'm delighted to be speaking and I ask Allah to reward you all. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the previous speaker, mashallah, Sheikh Muhammad Mufti Munir. So, naam, for those who may not know uh, about me, my name is, uh, you know, my name is Khalid Hassan, a very uh, uh, amazing intro that the brother did. And uh, mashallah, I'm a recent graduate from the Faculty of Sharia. Um, today, insha'Allah ta'ala, is a very, very, very important topic to speak about because this topic is something that يعني, it affects us today. And this particular topic is the importance, يعني, the lecture is entitled Stay in Your Lane. Stay in Your Lane. And it's very, very important that a Muslim stays in their lane. It's very, very important that a Muslim knows his position because just like anyone, يعني, as Muslims, we're part of a team. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran وَعَتِسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Okay, hold on to the uh, uh, a rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't be divided. Okay, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ بِقُلُوبِكُمْ Remember a time when talking to the companions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you were enemies, you were divided فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ and caused you to be brothers and out of his uh, favor of his grace you became brothers so subhanallah we as muslims we are one team we are all part of the same jama'ah yani those who are calling to the sunnah we are part of the same jama'ah calling to the haqq and trying to educate people whereas even though we're on the same team we have to understand that there's different levels to the team. There's different positions you have to play on the team. So likewise, يعني, if we think of Islam and the Muslims as people on a ship, the people at the bottom of the ship are going to have different roles than the people at the top of the ship. The driver or the captain of the ship is going to have greater responsibility than the people who are just simply on board on the ship. يعني, there's different elements that a person has to understand with regards to with regards to يعني, their position that they have to play. So likewise now, we have to know that even within Islam, people have different positions to play. People, for example, who are tujjar, who are businessmen, may have a different role than people who are scholars have to play. And people who are يعني, abidun, people who just pray in the masjid, may have a different role than the scholar teaching in the masjid. And sometimes it's very, very, very important that these views do not get conflated. يعني, and that everybody knows the role that they have to play. Okay? Um, because everyone's going to be asked about their hal in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you're going to be asked about يعني, ماذا يختص بك أنت? What is specific to you and your situation? You will not be asked about political affairs and affairs that you have no control of when you were just an everyday Muslim going to pray in the masjid every day and you have no control of anything. Okay? Which is why, okay? Which is why, يعني, uh, 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 it's very, very important that a Muslim does not start speaking about things that he doesn't know. And start saying things that he doesn't know because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, that a person will not say anything. A person on this dunya is not going to say anything except that there's a raqib. Raqib on atid. There's a person, there's an angel next to him, raqib. Someone yuraqibuhu. Al muraqaba in Arabic is to be watched. You're almost under surveillance, muraqaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that there's someone next to you that he's a raqib. He's looking at your every move. He's watching everything you do. He's looking at every single thing that you utter. Not, يعني, the angel is not there to do something evil to you. The angel is not evil. But the angel is looking at every single thing that you do. Every single thing that you say. Every action that you make. Because on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment, you're going to be asked about that which you do. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you have a raqibun, he then he said he's aqeed. Not only is he watching you, he is fully aware of what you're doing. He is fully aware of the things that you're saying. He is fully aware of what you uh, 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 are saying to the people and what you're saying alone. 
So based upon that, based upon that, on Yom Al-Qiyamah, you're going to be asked about what you said. On Yom Al-Qiyamah, you're going to have to be يعني, held accountable for that which you said. So it's very, very important on Yom Al-Qiyamah, you have a smooth passing because that's what we all want. We all want to transition from Yom Al-Qiyamah into Al-Jannah very easily. Now, if you put yourself in a position where you speak about the rights and the, of the Muslims, you speak about the affairs of the Muslims without knowledge, you speak about or well, you badmouth scholars or people in positions of authority that you personally might not know about, your, your, your transition in Yawm Al-Qiyamah may be very difficult because you spoke about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bighayri ilm, okay? You said something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge, okay? And you may think that you are defending the religion of Al-Islam when it might not be the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, لا تصب الذين يدعون من دون الله لا تصب لا تصب الذين يدعون الله يدعون من دون الله فيصب الله عدوا بغير علم يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى said do not curse لا تصب الذين يدعون من دون الله فيصب الله عدوا بغير علم do not in do not, Allah said in the Quran do not curse those people who call to other than Allah سبحانه وتعالى فَيَصُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا They will come back and curse Allah بِغَيْرِ عِلْمُ No knowledge. You may have a person who is, has not studied, a person who may not know the religion, a person who may not know particular aspects of halal and haram, who has now put himself in a position to speak about halal and haram, okay? And because of his lack of knowledge, he ends up putting us in more problems than were there before he spoke. Okay? Which is why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, okay, in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, in the A'adham al-Muslimina Jurman, the kind of Muslim who has committed the highest criminal offense. Okay? He said, man sa'ala an shay'in lam yuharrimu لم يحرم okay أو لم يحرم يعني a person who says something that is not حرام okay فحرم من أجل مصلحته that a person will be asked about something okay that is not حرام okay and he that that person is going to make that particular thing حرام just for the sake of his own benefits his own يعني, interior motives, his ulterior motives, he makes something haram because of it. So it's very, very important يعني, that we understand that a Muslim needs to stay in his lane. Now, what do we mean by staying in, staying in your lane? We mean that you do not speak about something except with knowledge and except يعني, by quoting and understanding the issue in its totality. So you as a Muslim now have to make sure when you speak about something that you have got somebody behind you from the scholars of Islam that have said this and that what you're saying, you wafiq al-adillah, what you're saying inshaAllah ta'ala is in alignment with the deleed of the Quran and the Sunnah. But if a person now looks at the television, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and tries to make ahkam rulings from what he sees without knowing halal and haram, you can cause ifsad and kabir. You can cause a lot of corruption in the land. And subhanAllah, look at this, look at this point. When it comes to masail of wudu, when it comes to issues of wudu, okay, when it comes to certain issues of salah or hajj or fasting, you'll find that Muslims are diligent diligent okay on speaking and looking at fatwas of scholars but they will not read the fatwa of these same scholars for example on bigger issues that they may call international affairs or whatever you want to say whereas in reality the reverse should be done a person is allowed to dispute and talk about with their friends 
اخي هذا الشيخ سي ذس از حرام اون ذا ايشو وضوء واخي هذا وين يو براي يو دونت هاف تو دو ذس او يو هاف تو دو ذات ما شاء الله شيخ ابن باز سيد ذس ان هيز بوك شيخ الباني سيد ذات ان ذات بوك ما شاء الله يعني ذيز ار مسائل ذيز ار ايشو وي كان سبيك اباوت but the reverse is subhanallah you will never hear that when it comes to politics or you will never hear that when it comes to huge new age issues you will hear that the person that has no knowledge is on the minbar speaking about these particular issues and that the people have taken him to be an example but when it comes to minute issues okay hail a woman on her cycle or when it comes to issues of does a person break his fast by doing this or doing that You find that the alim is us, يعني, mashallah, day and night. But when it comes to masail, huge masail, huge issues of al-Islam, you find that the alim is not even asked at all about that particular thing, which is ajeeb, which is ajeeb. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Qur'an, okay? He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ He said, if any of you, if you differ in an issue, return it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this message. If you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day, that is better for you. And it's a better, and it's a better, and ending for your affairs. So, Subhanallah, look at what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said to us in the Quran. Now, if we truly believe in Him, we will take things back to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the Messenger. What do the scholars say about taking things back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the Messenger? What they say about taking things back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala means that for those that were alive in the time of the, of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it meant going back to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his lifetime. For those who have come after him, after he has died sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it means going back to his sunnah and understanding his sunnah in particular issues where he needs to be, where a person needs to educate themselves in. What necessitates from that is that if a person doesn't have understanding of the sunnah, They need to ask somebody that has understanding of the sunnah. Very, very important. Yani. Okay. So, subhanAllah, look at this particular issue. Even when you look at um, issues regarding Islamic scholarship and being a mujtahid, being a person who gives fatawa, you will find that even the scholars of usul al-fiqh and the scholars of fiqh, They put conditions as to who can be a mufti, who can be a person who knows the religion of Islam. So they'll say that the person needs to have a high understanding of the Arabic language, for example. The person needs to understand يعني, tafsir al-ayat al-ahkam. That a person, for example, needs to know the tafsir, the meaning, the Quranic meaning of the ayat of the uh, of, of of the verse of quran re- related to ahkam rulings okay rulings after that the person needs to have a sustainable uh, an uh, amount of knowledge in every single science of the religion so a person needs to have a sizable amount of knowledge in the knowledge of hadith and he needs to have a particular amount of knowledge in knowledge of fiqh and he needs to have a particular amount of knowledge in usul al-fiqh And he needs to have a lot of or he needs to have a particular amount of knowledge in the religion uh, in in the issues of, for example, uh, uh, the Arabic language, tafsir, and and, and so on. After يعني, a person has that particular issue, he needs to be a person that he understands the mujtama that he lives in. He needs to understand the society that he lives in. He needs to understand the position that he's in. Do these people who are asking him have particular? Uh, do they have يعني, uh, a particular issues which allow them to, for example, uh, take certain positions which are easier than maybe particular other Muslims in other countries and, and so on and so forth. So you need to know the audience that you're speaking to. You need to know, for example, the hal of the people that you're talking to. Once you know the hal of the people that you're talking to, you can understand and you can... يعني, Bet you'll be in a better position to answer their questions. But unfortunately, what we have today is we have groups of Muslims who 
the first thing they do after practicing al-Islam is not going to the masjid and is not learning in the masjid. The first thing they do after practicing Islam and maybe the person has been praying for six months is they pick up a YouTube, uh, they pick up a, a camera and they start making vlogs or, or on YouTube or, or, or diaries or whatever you want to call it. This is, this is something which our generation, we never witness. Despite our misgivings and our mistakes in our generation, we never يعني, went to a, 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 a kind of a store that sells electronics and thought, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I know nothing about Islam. I'm going to buy a camera and start talking about Islam and talking about something that I have no idea about, even though I just pray and I watch, you know, you know, I, I, I play Xbox like, all night and I just started to pray, but I'm going to pretend if I'm a sheikh. And no, nah, it doesn't work like this. Okay, it doesn't work like this. And we're not saying that a person doesn't have the right to speak about it. You as a Muslim, you have the right to speak about your religion. You have the right to discuss your religion. But just like yeah, any, a person has a right to speak about with their brother, with their sister, with their mother, the symptoms of their cold, the symptoms of their flu, it does not give them the right to now go and start uh, uh, giving out medication, giving prescriptions for people to go to a pharmacy. and nah, You don't have that right. Because you haven't... Uh, 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 you haven't gone forth and, and studied medicine in order for you to give يعني, uh, ad medical advice. So likewise in the religion of Islam. Now a person may say Islam is not like the Catholic Church where you have يعني, a clergy, you have an official group of people who speak about the religion and nobody else can speak about it. We say you're correct. Islam is not, is not Judaism. Islam is not Catholicism. Islam is not something where um, the average Muslim cannot take part. The Muslim can take part. The average Muslim is allowed to take part. The average Muslim is welcome that he speaks about the affairs of his religion. But but he has to speak about them in that which he's able to speak about. He can't now start speaking about things that he has no particular understanding of at all. Okay? So that's very, very important as Muslims that we understand that, okay, that we understand this concept of ta'adhim al-ilm, of, يعني, of glorifying knowledge, glorifying knowledge and uh, the people have given towards knowledge and that we don't, that we stay in our lane insofar as we don't try to take away from those people who have put effort into learning this religion and are speaking and are yeah, and you're given doubt to this religion, and they may say things that maybe you may not agree with. But as a Muslim, you need to have ihtiram, you need to have respect for those people, and not to start speaking about things that you don't know, and then you start uh, making more chaos than things which are, for example, um, uh, you start making more chaos than, 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 that, than, than what was present before you came. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a person who won, who became a Muslim in the UK. This is maybe about 10 years ago, I remember. There's a documentary that came out about 10 years ago about a young Muslim man, a young uh, person who became Muslim. And their brother, this person's brother was a cameraman. This person's brother was a cameraman. So he journeyed or he journaled and recorded the journey of his brother who became a Muslim. Okay, tell us. Uh, oh, your mom's calling. What should I do? Uh, forgive me, sorry about that. Sorry no, about that. Well, we'll start. Um, if, if you have to answer. No, 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 no. I don't want to no, 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 fine. So, so what ended up happening was that this brother was journaling um, uh, his brother's uh, what do you call it? His brother's journey to Al Islam. So Subhanallah, he noticed that his brother started to hang around people who um, were not the best kind of Muslims. They were people uh, who were very. They had some tashaddud with them. They had some issues of extremism with them. They had some issues of yani harshness towards yeah, any particular members of society in the UK. So subhanAllah, these brothers never had any knowledge. Okay? These brothers had no knowledge. 
subhanAllah, what ended up happening was he would shake the hand of his brother with his right hand. And then suddenly, through some time, his brother noticed that he started shaking his hand with his left hand. I know this is, looks like it's my right hand side on the camera, but it's actually my left hand. So he started to shake his brother's hand with the left hand. So he asked, he said, why, uh, why do you only shake my hand? Why do you only shake my hand with your left hand? And his brother said, because as Muslims, we don't shake the hand of the non-Muslim with our right hand. We only shake it with our left hand because non-Muslims are dirty. For if this is what he said. Yani, there's nothing in the Quran, in the Sunnah, where it says that a Muslim is not allowed to shake his brother's hand or to shake his family member's hand who's not a Muslim or to shake a non-Muslim's hand with your right hand. There's nothing in Islam that says you have to shake it with your left hand. Nothing at all. Because of this, it caused so much chaos in the media. It caused, caused so much chaos, yani, where people thought that, okay, now Muslims believe that other people are just intrinsically dirty. Now, these people that he was taking his knowledge from, I'll tell you now, they probably had good intentions. Their intentions were probably to, yani, to understand, or their intentions probably, what they thought was, they were helping al-Islam. But when you look at what they were doing in reality, they were not helping Islam uh, at all. And they were going out, uh, speaking about things without knowledge, and they ended up causing a lot of fasad. They ended up causing a lot of uh, yani, corruption on the earth. Now, when you look back at that topic, why was that the case? That's a very, that, this is what we want to speak about. Why did I say this story? Because I didn't say it for entertainment. Why did they fall into this issue? Because they did not stay in their lane. They did not speak up, they did not say, they did not ask about this issue. They did not research this issue. They did not try to phone scholars. They did not try to phone students of knowledge in their country to find out whether or not this statement was real. They simply took it, okay? Um, they took the literal statement or they took what they thought was correct that they just heard from somebody else without any form of verification and they said it. And subhanAllah, it's a, we find that so much with Muslims today that a person will not stay in their lane, okay? Um, a person will not, yani, um, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, a person will not, yani, uh, take the due diligence of trying to learn particular things or trying to, yani, implement the religion from the ground up. And it's very, very important that as a Muslim, you start from the ground up, yani. To the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us in the hadith, he said, Bunyal Islam ala khams. Islam is brought upon five. Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah. Okay, wa anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. The first thing that Islam is built upon is the shahada. Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah. Okay, so as a Muslim now, you have to learn the most important elements of your religion, of your Islam. If the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that Bunyal Islam ala khams, Islam is built upon five. And the first thing he says is, Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Then we need to understand from that, from that particular issue, we need to understand that we need to understand what's the meaning of this shahada. What does this shahada mean? What is this thing that I'm saying? After we learn that, he said, wa iqam is salah, and to uphold the prayer. What's the prayer? How do we pray? What? Things do do we are we allowed to pray Zuhur before Asr? Are we allowed to pray Asr before Zuhur and things like that? And then after we do that, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wa ita'id zakat for you to give the zakat. Okay. Now we need to understand am I how am I eligible to pay zakat? Am I eligible to give to to to, to, to or am I not eligible to give zakat? If I have a debt, do I have to pay zakat? Yeah, I mean, there's so many issues that just on our fundamental aspects of our everyday religion, we need to know that we don't know. And then he said, Wahaj al bait, okay, and then for us to make hajj, okay, to make pilgrimage to the bait of Allah, to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That in of itself it needs knowledge. It takes you need to understand, okay the particular requirements to that particular thing. And then he said, وَصَوْمِ رَمَضَانَ And then to, okay, 
to fast in the month of Ramadan. In order for us to fast in the month, month of Ramadan, we need to know what breaks the fast. We need to know what do, we need to know what doesn't break the fast. We need to know how did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam fast? How did he not fast? What did he tell us to do when we fast? What did he tell us what to do when we didn't fast? We can only find that in all of this, these five issues. Learning some of these particular issues can take a long time, if not a lifetime. So what about now a person who bypasses all of these things, even though the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that this is an Islam? And he speaks about other issues. He starts speaking about things that he has no knowledge of. Okay, he has he starts speaking about this and that, causing chaos in his wake. Yeah, Ikhwan, as a Muslim, we need to understand that it's very important for us to know our lane, to stay in our lane. Okay, and to not speak about those things that we don't know, to not talk about those things that we don't know. Imam Malik, rahimahullah taala was asked 40 plus questions and in maybe 36 or 37 or 38 out of 46 47 questions he said La adiri, i don't know La adiri, i don't know and i can guarantee you imam malik had answers to those questions or he knew something about those questions but the reason why he said La adiri, i do not know is because of wara because of his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala His fear that if he says something Somebody may misinterpret it And implement it in the wrong way And because of that He said la adiri When you look at for example some of the scholars of For example Imam Ahmed When Imam Ahmed was asked Is this haram or is this halal Rather than saying something is haram He would say it is makruh That is disliked Not because that particular thing was makruh, but because of his fear that he would say something which was ha- which was haram, or he he, yeah, and he would say that this particular thing is makruh, is disliked, and not say haram because he was scared that he would go on the day of judgment and say that this particular thing is haram, even though it might have not have been haram. So he did not want to speak about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala without knowledge. So he would say this particular action. That you're talking about is makru, it's disliked. But he meant it was haram. But because of his wara, his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not want to make the Muslims put themselves into something whereby they make something halal or haram, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make. And then they say, oh, Ahmed said it. Imam Ahmed told me this. Imam Ahmed told me that. فَهَكَذَا كَانَ الْعُلَمَاء This is how the ulama used to be يعني, of al-Islam. This is how the ulama still are, but that's, those were our great scholars, our great scholars of this religion, who had fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala. One of the issues when it comes, okay, um, to this issue of staying in your lane, is that, in my humble opinion, it it correlates with no taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa taala in many cases, not all cases. Sometimes you have some brothers who may just be practicing al Islam, the early in practicing Islam, and they're just speaking, that's fine. But when you have a person who is a jahil and he's been doing this for years, he's a serial, um, he's a person that's been jahil for years and he's had the ability, for example, to improve his situation Islamically. And he hasn't tried at all to better himself Islamically. Then, and he speaks about things that he doesn't know, then this is clearly the person. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given tawfiq from because, uh, Allah has not given this person the ability To learn his religion and to bless him Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran Man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fiddin Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for He will give him understanding of this religion Whoever Allah wants good for wants, Will give understanding of this religion what you can infer from that is that whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want good for, he will not give him fiqh of this religion. He will not give him understanding of this religion. Now there's, a talk, now there's an issue. If this person now is speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his religion all the time without any knowledge, this person has to ask himself, where is his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Okay. 
واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا That fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will ask you on a day of judgment about many things and some of them including your family ties يعني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you about things in the day Do we think about what we say? Do we think about the importance of saying لا أدري Do we, imp- do we think about the importance of, for example, keeping quiet when there's a time to be quiet? Do we keep quiet when, it's, when there's a time to keep quiet? And do we speak when there's a time to speak? Oh, نقلب الأمر Oh, we revert it. When it's time to keep quiet, we speak. And when it's time to speak, we keep quiet. That's why they say in the Arabic language, لكل مقام مقال Okay? For every situation There's something that needs to be said So yeah And it's very 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 important Okay It's very 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 important That we as Muslims Okay Keep diligence with our actions Are diligent with what we say And that we don't transgress The hudud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We don't transgress What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said We don't speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with knowledge. Okay? And that we don't do things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do. Or we don't do the opposite of that thinking that what we're doing is knowledge. What do I mean by that? I remember subhanallah, people would take the wrong examples when it came to practicing al-Islam. In Islam, uh, 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 where I live in London, I mean, you know, 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we had the issue of people who had extremist beliefs, extremist beliefs. Now this word extremism has been a word that's been hijacked. We can't even say the word extremism anymore because anyone who says extremist, people think that you're, um, t- that you're, for example, working with authorities or you're doing this or you're, no. Ikhwan, when it comes to saying someone is an, ex- is an extremist or has extreme belief, We're talking about a person that is not mu'tadil, a person that's not on the middle path. An extreme is a is a concentration of one thing and not a concentration of another. As Muslims, we are mu'tadilun, qawm wasat. We follow the wasat, okay? Um, so we had an issue in London where Muslims are following a particular issue, a particular tayyar, a particular movement. So what I would remember was there were people who would base their prayers, for example, on the people that they thought were upon truth or upon haq in their religion, in their, in their perception. So I would see a brother praying, for example, in a particular way. And I would think to myself, SubhanAllah, why is this guy, why is this guy praying like that? And when you would ask this particular brother, he would say, I'm praying like this because people in such and such a country pray like that people in such and such an environment pray like that and subhanallah can you imagine someone saying that think about the mindset of this particular person that he will say to you that i'm praying like such and such and people because these people are upon the truth or i love what these people are doing and therefore i pray like them when in reality what it should have been was how did the message of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam pray How did his companions pray? How did he order them to pray? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli, pray the way you see me pray. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, Yani, can Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he raffed his hands to the salah, if he came to the salah, he raffed his hands until he became a hazard man. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he prayed, he would raise his hands, okay, till they were near his shoulders and he would make his takbir. And then after some reports of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would put his hands, okay, uh, 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 you know, some, some, some reports say that he put his hands low, some, there's different reports of what the, how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed. But yeah, and this is how a person talks. This is how, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would pray, they'll say, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ta'ta'a when he would pray, his head would be down. He would pray with khushur, okay? Yeah, and this is how a Muslim should think that, When I'm going to pray, I want to know how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed. So I can pray like him. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْرَةٌ حَسَنًا 
Then the Messenger of Allah is the best example. But we've got people in the UK, our generation, we were doing the reverse. We didn't ask about what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, do. We said, what does, what do so and so do? What does this group of people do? What does that group of people do? And because of that, we found ourselves in a lot of problems because we were not staying in our lane. I remember you had people, for example, who talk about great scholars of Al Islam, great scholars of Al Islam, and certain scholars of Al Islam were mocked. Scholars of Al Islam were mocked. Scholars of Al Islam were laughed at because of what they said. At one point, they would say about Ibn Uthaymeen, Ibn Baz, Al Albani, Ulama al Hayd wal Nifas, scholars of, 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 of menstruation or pregnancy kind of blood because they believe that these scholars will not answer question, large questions regarding the Ummah if you look at Ibn Baz's da'wah or the da'wah of Ibn Uthaymeen or the da'wah of Al-Bani you'll find that SubhanAllah from the moment they started giving da'wah to the time they died they were helping others they were calling to Al-Islam they were calling to Tawheed they were calling to Sunnah so SubhanAllah you need to have the correct perspective just because you don't see a particular thing not being done it doesn't mean it's not being done just because you don't see ulama or scholars talking about a particular issue doesn't mean it's not being spoken about just because you see students of knowledge not speaking about particular things it doesn't mean it's not being spoken about perhaps your perception of the issue is not what it should be perhaps you want to speak about an issue on the minbar that needs to be spoken about privately Perhaps you want to speak about an issue on the minbar when it can be dealt with without being spoken about like that. So subhanAllah, your perspective on what the truth is sometimes needs to be checked and evaluated because it's not about what you want. It's not about what we think is haq. It's about what the haq is in and of itself. And once we understand that many of us perhaps may not have we, not, might, we might not be the strongest in knowledge And that doesn't mean that we're putting ourselves down It doesn't mean that we're humiliating one another But perhaps our knowledge May not be what it should be And because of that Because of that Because we don't know Or because our knowledge isn't what it should be I don't We might not have the particular right now To go And speak about particular things That we don't know about So for example Yani Imam Sa'di, he said, he said a famous uh, line in a line of poetry. He said, وَمِنْ قَوَاعِدِ الشَّرِيعَةِ تَيْسِيرُ فِي كُلِّ أَمْرِ نَابَهُ تَعْسِيرُ He said, وَمِنْ قَوَاعِدِ الشَّرِيعَةِ تَيْسِيرُ From the rulings of the Sharia, when you look at it from a bird's eye view, is that the religion is built upon ease. It's built upon making, making things easy for the slave. It's not built upon making things difficult. Which is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said يَسِّرُوا وَلَا تُعَسِّرُوا He said يَسِّرُوا وَلَا تُعَسِّرُوا Make things easy And don't, things, and don't make things difficult وَبَشِّرُوا وَلَا تُنَفِّرُوا وَبَشِّرُوا And give glad tidings to people وَلَا تُنَفِّرُوا Be a person of glad tidings And don't be a person where you make people flee from you You have to be a person that MashaAllah تَسْتَوْعِبُ الناس. You are uh, يعني, uh, a nice person. Okay. So, so Imam Sa'adi said, وَمِنْ قَوْعِ الشَّرِيعَةِ تَيْسِيرُ The religion is built upon ease. فِي كُلِّ أَمْرِنَا بَهُ تَعْسِيرُ On every issue that becomes difficult, there's ease. A Muslim might not know that قَاعِدَة. A Muslim might not know that the religion is built upon ease. And when there's difficulty, Allah gives us an option. So for example, when a person is unable to stand and pray, because they had a car crash, because they have chronic back pain, they can pray in a chair. Prophet Sallallahu said, Salli qa'idan, fa'in lam tustati' fa'qa'idan, fa'in lam tustati' fa'ala al-jam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Salli qa'idan, pray standing up. Fa'in lam tustati' if you're not able, fa'qa'idan, and sit down. Fa'in lam tustati' if you're not able to, then on your side. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said that if you don't have water, do tayammum. Okay, do tayammum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also told us that if we're on a journey, we can shorten our prayers. If we're on a journey, we can combine our prayers. So subhanAllah, you find that in the religion, when things are very difficult in and of itself, 
Allah allows there to be ease. Now, what about if we come across a person who never heard about this? If we come across, come across a Muslim who doesn't know about these particular rules of the Sharia, and he hears a scholar saying this, or he hears even his Muslim brother who has researched the issue saying this, who say, Ahi, you're calling to bid'ah, Ahi, you're calling to this, you're calling to that, Ahi, you don't know what you're talking about. Who said that you can, that, that, that you can do tayammum? What's tayammum? Allah told us to do wudu. What's tayammum? Well, a person can say, Akhi, who told you you can combine your journey, your, your prayers on, or when you, when you, when you, when you, who told you that? Akhi, you can never combine your prayers. You have to do your prayers on their time because it doesn't come out of knowledge because the brother's not staying in their lane. And then you say to him, Akhi, Al-Kareem, Akhi, you know, the ulama said this. And then, he, you know, sometimes you hear them, you hear brother, oh, who, who are the ulama? What ulama are you talking about? Subhanallah. If the person just sat down up with himself, man tawada'a lillah raf'ahu Allah. Whoever has the any tawad or whoever becomes humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah raise him. So subhanAllah, if you hear something that you don't even that you've never heard before, and the brother is quoting an alim to you, this goes back to the theme of what we're saying, your lane. Don't scream at him. Listen to what he says and go back and research. Ask to your local imam, ask the Ali the Talib al Ibn, you know, knowledge in your area, and find out what's happening, if it's true or false. Stay in your lane yeah, I need before yeah, I need something else, you know. Uh, I need, I'm not going to say it overtakes us, but stay in our lane so that on the on normal Qiyamah, we can have yeah, need an easy time. Whereas if we don't, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable and yeah, need, we'll be interrogated in the normal Qiyamah, which is something that we don't want. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, that's just a brief overview of what I've said. Any khayr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything wrong that I've said is uh, from myself. And uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, 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 to forgive me for my shortcomings. Insha'Allah ta'ala, we can open up the door, the floor to questions if there are any, insha'Allah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan, Mustaf Khalid. Barakallah fikum. It was very, very beneficial. Hayakallah. Um, well, for the questions, please uh, send us uh, a, a message to us, insha'Allah. And we will get along to uh, Ustaz Khalid, inshallah. Oh, Ustaz Khalid, inshallah, I'll start off. I'll start off. Inshallah. No problem, no problem, inshallah. <laughs> um, Ustaz, uh, mashallah, you know, you mentioned uh, very, very uh, fundamental points. And, um, you know, subhanAllah, we went through a lot of challenges here, uh, down under as mm. well, in Australia, with uh, mm-hmm. what you were saying in London, mm. you know, with these... Um, with these extremists, you know, unfortunately, we had a mm-hmm. very tough time. And uh, to be honest, mm-hmm. the, community, the community is still healing from it. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think, uh, what's, what's the best, uh, what's, what's your advice in uh, dealing with uh, making sure our youth don't fall into these mistakes? I think, mashallah, I think one of the issues that many brothers who try to call to the Salafi Da'wah um, was we need to be aware of two issues. Number one, we need to be, we need to number one, understand the importance of early in, in, uh, intervention. We need to speak about these issues to our youth before the takfiris get to them. That's the first thing. Yeah. And we need to speak and make them understand that not everything is what it seems. And not everything, complex answer, uh, complex issues, a lot of the time of complex answers. And what you find with these takfiris is that there's, a one, uh, there's one answer for everything. You know, so, you know uh, we have to topple this or topple that regime and suddenly, subhanAllah, there's going to be a utopia, which anyone who's been alive for more than 20 years, 25, 30 years, can tell you that um, life is not that easy and it, it doesn't, things don't come about like that at all. So I think we need to tell the Shabab, number one, when you hear this da'wah, don't fall for it. So we need to have early intervention with regards to our uh, youth to not fall into this tower, number one. So we need to catch them and talk about these things because whether we like it or not, <laughs> excuse me, whether we like it or not, uh, this is a marhala, this is a stage that youth go through. They start practicing their religion. Uh, you know, they have the miswak, you know, child's above the ankles. But then they come to this part where they start feeling the pain of the ummah and things like that. And that's very, very important. So we have to have early intervention. Number one, I think it comes to akhlaq. You can win a person over on manners. 
sometimes it's not what you say, it's the way in which you say it. Um, when the Shabab come to us with these issues, we shouldn't be quick to kick them out of the Masajid or, or, or something like that. We need to engage them. And the reason why I say that is because Abdullah bin Abbas, uh, Abdullah bin Abbas, okay, when the Khawarij was spreading, Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu ba'athahu, he sent him, ليجادلهم, sent him to debate with the Khawarij. And he debated with the Khawarij, okay? And he took one third of the army of the Khawarij back with him. Yani some say 4,000, 6,000. He took thousands of people back with him that, yani, لبس عليهم, that they were tricked and they were confused. So he cleared their doubt and he brought them back. So I think it's very important that this issue of dialogue, with the old kind of um, uh, way of dealing with them where they're just ignored as if they don't exist, that's something that can't be done. They need to be taken on and challenged. Um, so I'll say early intervention, having good akhlaq when dealing with the people who have that particular issue and challenging their actual ideas. That's the three things I'd say. Jazakumullah uh, khair, Ustaz. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a uh, very, very important um, Because like mm-hmm. you said, um, ignoring is no way, the way to go. Mm-hmm. Oh, because, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm assuming that's... Is, 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 to be honest, mashallah, in the UK, but along with that, mm-hmm. uh, the, the du'at have done a fantastic job. You know, I can think of mm-hmm. like Sheikh Abu Sama Dhabi. Like, he's done so, Yo. so well, mashallah, in tech. And we don't, to be yeah. honest, we don't have that. I'll be straight on. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have mm-hmm. that. Yeah, like it's, mm-hmm. it's a big problem. It's, it's really strange because um, about Abu Osama Dhabi, you probably remember, at one point he was literally alone going against this. He was no. literally a one man show, no. you know. Um, before this new generation of, of mashallah, of guys who are coming out giving da'wah, at one point the guys, the guys who were talking against, you know, these crazy organizations, it was literally Abu Osama Dhabi. And subhanAllah, in the UK, he was, um, it was strange because. It was, he was very, because of that, um, people found at one point his da'wah was almost polarizing. But if you look at the time, the standard time, his da'wah has now stood the test of time. You know, what he's called to has stood the test of time and what they've called to has eliminated. So subhanAllah, yani, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's true. Wallahi, Abu Usama Dhabi did an amazing job. And to be honest with you, um, mashallah, he was one of the people who helped guide me after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm-hmm. he's one of the people who helped guide me to understand the sunnah correctly and I'm indebted to Abu Sam al Dhabi wa Allahi I really am and uh, inshallah ta'ala you can come and uh, maybe inshallah we can meet up with him inshallah yawm min ayyam one day inshallah and we can talk about these issues inshallah inshallah, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> inshallah. He's, he's really passionate about it mashallah he does an excellent job he is and even yeah, uh, yeah. I, I remember uh, even green line mashes were doing conferences mm-hmm. on this yep. and and yeah. bring ulama from saudi and kuwait and mashallah that's yep. what we need you know alhamdulillah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly uh, yeah mashallah dawah in the uk you know you guys are on the ball with that along with that <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah 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 mashallah. um yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I've got one question here. That's fine. Uh, okay, yes, subhanAllah. The brother is asking because he's saying a lot of takfidis quote this. They're saying, uh, How do you deal with when they say we only judge by the parent? And you know how they bring the call of Umar radiallahu anhu, which is, mm. yeah, yeah, they, they love using this and they, 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 they throw this on people. Yeah, so that's what the brother is asking pretty much. Yeah, so um, when they say this issue with uh, we only judge by the apparent, that's another thing that they've kind of, it's a skewed statement, you know. It's really funny because when you look at, for example, what the Khawarij used to say, they would always say, in al hukm illa lillah, that the rule is only for Allah. Now, if you take this statement in and of itself alone, you would say that it, it, there's some truth to it. But Ali radiallahu anhu and the Prophet said about Ali, Aqda Ummati Ali, the most the greatest of all judges in my ummah is Ali. He said, Kalimatul Haq Urida biha al They're saying a statement of truth 
behind it is falsehood. So even this issue of we judge by what's apparent, that's a very strange thing to say because as a Muslim, before you make, for example, before you pronounce takfir on a person, before you pronounce a person to be a disbeliever, you have to make sure that the conditions are met and the mawani are met. Mean, and that there are no mawani, meaning that there are no preventative things causing you from making takfir. There's an issue, there's a, there's, a very, there's a big difference between something known as takfir mutlaq, takfir mu'ayyin. Basically, if a scholar says, whoever has done this is a kafir, he's saying this in a general term. He doesn't mean a specific person. You now make a takfir on a specific person means that you have to know his situation very well, which is why they say, man thabata islamuhu yaqeenan la yuduz ikhraju illa bil yaqeen. Whoever's Islam, we know that they are a Muslim 100% with yaqeen. We can't now throw him out of the religion except with dalil, which is yaqeen. Yaqeen. And a lot of these issues today, if you look at them, okay, certain things might be uh, uh, apparent, but then there's always a kind of grey side. There's shubuhat, there's, it's that, there's a grey area, we don't know what's going on. You know, people are constantly looking at politics or people are constantly looking at particular things in the Muslim world. You find that we can't even, nobody knows the truth of what's really going on. It's this huge grey area, literally, like we don't know what's going on. There's no transparency, no one has no clue of what is going on. Based upon that, as a Muslim, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, الحلال بين والحرام بين بينهما أمور مشتبهات لا يعرفهن كثير من الناس. The halal is clear, the haram is clear, and between the halal and the haram, there are issues that are مشتبهات. People can't see what they what they are. They they issues that are not clear. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم went on to say, فمن اتقى الشبهات فقد استبرع لدينه وعرضه. Whoever fears these this grey area then he's made bara'ah from his religion and his honor, meaning that he saved himself. And then the Muslim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on to go and say, وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِي الشُّبُهَاتِ وَقَعَ فِي الْحَرَامِ Whoever goes into these, delves into these great areas, falls into haram. Because even right now, we've got a lot of these things, they're great areas that we can't do tahqiq of. We can't investigate what's going on. Because as Muslims, we leave this issue. So when people always say that um, we judge by what's apparent, you may judge by what is apparent, but you have to understand what you're seeing. Is it truly something which is apparent? Is it truly something which is dahir or not? If you believe that it's something that is dahir, you have to come down and bring proof that it's dahir. But on many, many uh, issues today, things are just simply not clear. We don't know what is going on. So that's why a Muslim should leave it. Also, another thing we should say is that everything in the religion is levels, and we have to prioritize. What's going on in the, we have to prioritize our issues in the West. The West, we in the West have many issues that we need to prioritize. Our sisters are not, not wearing hijab. Our brothers are smoking drugs. This is happening. That is happening. We have to prioritize. These are major issues themselves. Don't look somewhere far and look at, just don't think that the only thing which is, which is bad that's happened to the Ummah is warfare. Only warfare. Only, only oppression. Ahi, oppression is many types. Okay. This is a huge issue that we have right now. The fact that Muslims are not praying their salah. Muslims are not worshipping Allah. This is huge. This would be something that, is, that we should see as huge. It's not something which is small. Okay? So we need to focus on our issues. We have to focus on things which... And that doesn't mean that we forget about our Muslim brothers. But we have to also prioritize. Allah said, Save yourself and then your families from the hellfire. So now. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Very uh, clear answer. Uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, you reminded me again back uh, back to our context in Australia because uh, even mm-hmm. our many tulab and du'at uh, mm-hmm. have a focus on what you were saying on like international affairs, but they're not focused mm-hmm. on what's in their backyards. Like, mm-hmm. if you were to ask them, what's uh, you know, what are some of the challenges in Australia? Do you know your local mm-hmm. council, your local municipal? Mm-hmm. They, they, won't, they won't be able to answer you, but mm-hmm. they will put a status on Facebook like talking about international affairs. So it's kind of why, you know, it's, it's yep. yeah, a long time. A lot of clock. Exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
the one uh, one question says, uh, what are the practical steps to staying balanced in our being? Um, number one, it's not number one. The practical steps to stay balanced in our religion is number one to um, to verify what's ha what's truly happening. Verification is very important. Verification in of itself takes time. Also, not always believing everything you hear in the media, okay? And number three is to have a long-term vision. Have a long-term vision of what you want to be as a Muslim and build your Islam according to that. You have to have a marathon mentality. Islam is your whole life. Allah said, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسِكِ وَمَحْيَاءِ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say that indeed my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your whole life is for the sake of Allah. If this thing is your entire life's journey, then you need to see it as your entire life's journey. You can't see it as this is something that I'm, that I'm going through as a teenager or in my 20s. This is a project for your entire life. So you need to have a marathon mentality. If you have a marathon mentality, then you will prepare for things properly. You will make sure that you do things properly. You look after yourself properly. You look after what you eat. You look after what the way you train. So likewise, even your religion. Allah said, "Wala tulku bi aidikum ila tahluka." Do not throw yourself by way of your own hands into destruction. So just because you hear of a tragedy or you hear from something that's going on, don't throw yourself into destruction, and have a like have a long term vision for your religion. If you have a long-term religion for, for your religion, then you'll be able to judge things in the long term. If I follow this particular group, is it going to help me in the long term? If I do this, will it help me in the long term? And that will help you with your judgment, inshallah ta'ala. So now, inshallah, smile. And obviously to seek knowledge, to seek knowledge of the religion. Seek knowledge as much as you can. That's, that's the most important thing. So now. Barakallah so I will end with, end with inshallah uh, one last advice you can give us. Okay. Uh, a lot of brothers have concerns. Uh, you know, they ask us. They see in our communities, uh, mashallah, there's a lot of brothers that are actually popular. They do a lot of khayr. But mm -hmm. uh, it goes back to the topic tonight. Uh, they don't stick to their lane. Some of them aren't even qualified. They're not even students of knowledge, but they're really mm -hmm. famous. What's your advice uh, for brothers and sisters to uh, navigate through these kind of uh, speakers that are very like motivational, but they do get out of their lanes, to be honest. They start giving mm -hmm. without realizing. What's the best way Muslims can navigate through these? Uh, yeah, I would say that these motivational speakers need to, number one, understand what they are, and that's motivational speakers. So you need to understand that as a Muslim, you're going to have times where you need a motivational speech. Maybe you're feeling down and out and maybe you want to need a motivational speech. So, okay, take your motivational speech, but leave it there. Understand this person is not a scholar. The moment you understand this person is not a scholar, then half of the journey is done. So you need to understand this person is not a scholar and that this person may appear to have a lot of knowledge, but may not have that much knowledge. That doesn't mean that we're trying to take away from their efforts in the religion. This person is a person that you can listen to, but you have to also remember that when it comes to the issues of your religion, in terms of uh, fatawa, these are things يعني, that are exclusive to you. You may ask a person a question, which literally your dunya and your akhirah are at stake. So therefore, you need to understand that this brother that you listen to is a very good speaker, but remember that his, um, his skill set is limited. His skill set is limited to um, making people remember Allah, maybe making people cry and fear Allah, but that doesn't mean that he knows halal and haram. So make sure that you take knowledge from those people who are qualified in the realm of halal and haram. And you take yeah, any issues back to where they need to be taken back to so you can either speak to qualified students of knowledge in the west and if you can't do that or you want to take out further you can speak to actually bona fide scholars in the islamic world or other part you know in the middle east or other parts of the islamic world you can do all of those things but what i would say is don't allow your heart to become attached to a speaker make sure your heart is attached to the religion of islam and know that this person is simply a wasila, he's simply a means to an end. 
raising your iman and things like that. But do not attach your heart to a particular speaker. Always remember, you know, that he could be wrong. He's simply a speaker. And that if you want real knowledge, go to scholars. And make sure you have your daily dose of spirituality, your Qur'an, your, you know, you read the Qur'an or you try to do, you try to do dhikr, you try to remember Allah. But just remember to differentiate between or understand that not every speaker is a scholar. So the things that you ask a speaker, you're not going to ask a scholar. Listen to the speaker and take what he is good at in terms of his speech. But he's not a scholar. So that's that's what I'll that's what I'll say, brothers. That's what I'll say, Akhil Khalid. And when's your class starting? when's that starting? Oh inshallah, that's the uh, mashallah shukran. That's that's in uh, that's in I think the nineteenth of September. So inshallah to Allah Khair Khair. It'll be on YouTube. Weekly inshallah. Sorry? It it will be weekly, inshallah. Yeah, weekly, weekly, inshallah. Yeah, we'll be weekly, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, shukran. Thank you for asking. Uh, may Allah reward you, inshallah. I mean, I mean, well, yeah. Thanks so much, Mr. Khan. It was an honor to have Okay, fine. Insha okay, inshallah. Okay, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Have a good day. Have a good day. Jazakum la khairan. Inshallah, uh, we will continue next week. Uh, thanks so much for joining. Barakallah feekum.